Okay, hello everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. Welcome to our next lesson in the applications of integration. Um, this whole unit is, is talking about how to find area between curves as well as three-dimensional volume, right? Um, we've already talked about how to find the area between two functions. We talked about how to find cross-sectional volume. And uh, the last two lessons from this unit that we need to talk about is, is something called rotational volume. And there's two methods that we have with that. It's called a disk method and a washer method. So those are our next two lessons. This lesson is specifically on um, the, the disk method. We'll, we'll, again, that's, that's our lesson. We, uh, we're first going to review ourselves on uh, everything that we've learned so far in this unit. And this is a great free response that does so. So, um, like for instance here, part A is going to refresh finding the area of a curve. And uh, part B is going to refresh us on how to do cross sections. So then we should be all caught up. Okay. Okie doke. Um, it says the functions f and g are given by f of x equals the square root of x. And uh, you can clearly see that shape right here. And g of x is 6 minus x. So this line right here. Okay. Let uh, r be the region bounded by the x-axis. And the graphs of f and g as shown in the figure above. So we see this R region clearly uh, enclosed by the x-axis and the two functions. Okay? And it wants us to find the area of R. It wants us to find this shaded region right here. Well, we talked about two different ways that we could do that. We could do um, top minus bottom or right minus left. And the more that I look at this problem, um, the more that I realize you could do both. You could do either way. And I'm sure if you do either way, you would you would get uh, credit. I'm going to do it as top minus bottom, um, which is how the answer key is, is formatted. But honestly, you have an entire right function on this side, an entire left function on this side. So as long as you could get this as a, uh, as a, as a x equals equation, and this is an x equals equation, you can do right minus left from zero to two. And I may do both. We'll just see what time allots for us. Okay. All right, let's find let's talk about how to find the area of R. Now if we're going to do top minus bottom, we've talked about this before. Um, we have a top function all the way up until x equals four. And then from four to six, okay, we have another top function. So we want to split up the integration right here at four. So for instance, if I want to know the area of this shaded region right here, okay, that's going to be the, um, I'm going to do it right, I'll set it up right here. That's the integration from 0 to 4 of my top function, which is the square root of x, minus my bottom function, um, which in this case is just zero okay dx and then if i want to do the area of this other shaded region then you can add the integral from four to six of my top function which is six minus x minus my bottom function which is zero and that will give you this shaded region but in the answer key they actually did a really clever way they realized that this additional shaded region right here is nothing more than a triangle. So they didn't even bother writing it as an integral. They just said that this is a triangle, which is one half base, which is two, times my height, which is two. So they literally just wrote it that way, which is fine either way. But uh, let's quickly evaluate that just to refresh ourselves. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it like the answer key did. I'm just gonna worry about the integration zero to four, area equals integration zero to four. Instead of uh, square root of x, I'm going to say x to the one-half power dx um, plus one-half two times two. Okay. All right, so we add one. Okay, so let's just, uh, let's just quickly do this. I, the, this is all stuff you should be pretty good at by now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to integrate x to the one-half power to be um, uh, two-thirds x to the three-half powers if we integrate that. 
evaluated from zero to four plus let's scroll down sorry um, two times two is four divided plus two okay all right um, simply put if I plug four into this I got two thirds uh, four to the three halves plugging zero into that cancels it out so then plus two so uh, for sake of time I'm actually going to leave the answer in this form I don't think it would be too terrible to uh, to solve that out further if we needed to but um, but there you have it okay all right um, so that's part a let's do part Okay, B says the region R is now the base of a solid. So for each Y, now this is an interesting problem, a little bit different than what we've done. It says for each Y, where Y is between 0 and 2, 0 being all the way down here at the x-axis, and 2 being the very top point there. Uh, the cross-sections of the solid taken perpendicular to the y-axis. So my cross-sections actually look like this, which most of our cross-sectional lessons have been perpendicular to the x-axis so this is actually opposite of what we're used to um, so the cross section so if I were to if I were to cut this horizontally like I'm doing right now perpendicular to the y-axis um, we're going to say the rectangles whose base lies in the region R so the base is these lines I'm drawing here and the height of these rectangles jolting out of this paper, which I'm trying to draw three-dimensional rectangles coming out here, uh, the height is simply 2y. Now, I like how this problem is set up. It says to write, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid. So this is going to be a good refresher on how we follow these steps for um, uh, cross-sections. Cross sections are simply put as the integration from A to B of some area equation. Now this time in this equation, since we're perpendicular to the y axis, this is A of y dy. This is a, so if I want to, so if I want to know the base, for instance, I'm going from the right of the function to the left of the function. Okay, so it needs to be in terms of y. Okay. All right, so uh, in order to figure out what I'm integrating, A sub Y, I need to start with an A equation. I need to start with a generic area equation. In this case, it's base times height because I'm talking about a rectangle. Okay. All right, now we got to get this in terms of Y, right? we got to get it as A of Y. Well, the base, for instance, is, again, the base is the difference between the right equation and the left equation. The right equation is 6 minus x, and the left equation is the square root of x. But again, since we're doing uh, right minus left, it needs to be in terms of like y, so I'm going to get uh, x by itself here. So for instance, over here, uh, this is x equals um, 6 minus y, and this is x equals y squared, just simply trying to get them by themselves. Okay. So, for instance, my base is the difference between the two. So, the difference from the right equation, which is 6 minus y, subtract the left equation, which is y squared. So, there's my base. My height is simply told from the problem. My height is just 2y. So, there's my area equation in terms of y. So, if I want to uh, know the, the, the cross-sectional volume here, it is the integral from my lower bound 2 to my upper bound, uh, or lower bound 0 to my upper bound 2, of the area equation. So 6 minus y minus y squared times 2y dy. There you have it. All right, for sake of time, I'm going to jump on to the lesson, but uh, part C, which uh, the last part in all these problems is usually just some uh, random uh, problem where they want you to think outside the box, but uh, we'll come back and do C together. It's talking about finding a tangent line with a perpendicular slope. So see if you can attempt that on your own, but we, it's, it's filled out online. But we'll figure it out uh, in, in class later. And if you want to look at the points, and again, I'm going to do this with us in class, here they are broken down for you, but I mostly was doing this to help refresh ourselves on finding the area between two curves 
um, and, uh, and finding cross-sectional volume. So now we're on to the lesson today, okay? We're on to finding the volume by disk method. Um, this is almost identical to the process of um, cross-sectional volume like we just did. You can even see uh, the volume equation right here is the same thing that we have for cross-sections, right? But now the volume that we're always going to use is pi r squared because we're talking about a rotational volume and when you rotate something it makes a circular cross section okay all right so how disk method works think of the cross sections as literally disks you know like cds or disks a circular shape it finds the volume of a solid obtained by rotating a region about a line creating a solid without any gaps the cross sections of this solid will be a full disk. So this is the equation where the area is always um, pi r squared. And because pi is a, um, a constant, I always write it as pi integral a to b r squared um, uh, dx. Okay. So let me, let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say that the, the region that I'm going, so we're rotating a region about a line. Let's say the region I'm looking at is, uh, is y equals the square root of x. Um, and the, I'm going to say LOR for line of revolution, I'm going to say is the x-axis. Um, I'm also going to say that we're also bounded by x equals 9. These are all criteria that would be given at the beginning of a problem. So let's see, let's graph y equals the square root of x first over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up 3. That's what it should look like. Okay. And we got x equals 9 right here. So the region that I'm taking is this region right here. Okay. And I'm rotating it about the x-axis, which is this line right here. Now, imagine what happens if I take this purple shaded region and rotate it about that blue line. I'm rotating it around in a circle. It, it, it's going to make this kind of three-dimensional figure, this three-dimensional figure where if I were to slice it down the middle, it makes uh, a disc shape almost looks something, I'm going to try to draw it like this, it almost makes something like this. There's my three-dimensional figure, if you can kind of picture it right there. Okay, where again, the radius is the difference from my equation to my line of revolution. So I'm going to write that down real quick. My radius is just equal to my equation minus my line of revolution, okay? So that's the only thing we really need to figure out, okay? So it's the same thing as cross-sections. It's just that, like, my base now is my radius. And whenever you do this area or this uh, volume, it's almost like doing a rotational volume. Now, I wanted to share this really cool website that shows disk method. Um, and I'm sharing this link as well in our Canvas page. And I'll explain how we can use it in class later, but for now, I want to show you um, this exact. So again, I got this link online. This is really cool, but, but here's the equation I just drew. Here is the line y equals the square root of x, and I bounded it from 0 to 9 like I did in our example. And the shaded region is everything between that and the x-axis. Watch what happens when I rotate this about the y-axis, my line of revolution. See how it, it revolves and makes this three-dimensional figure here? Can you see this three-dimensional figure that it makes? How cool is that? So I just wanted to kind of let you visualize it with, with a graph here. We're rotating that volume around. It's making this third dimension. And whenever we integrate it, it tells us that that volume is. All right, so let's, uh, let's just solve this one out real quick, show you how it looks. And once you set it up, the math is everything that you're used to seeing, right? 
So um, the volume is equal to uh, the integral from the far left point to the far right point. So all the way from zero to nine. And again, I like to go ahead and put that pi on the outside. Okay. And then it's going to be r squared dx. Instead of r, we're going to do the square root of x uh, squared uh, dx. And I apologize. It's the difference from the equation to the line of revolution. The equation is the square root of x. The line of revolution is just y equals zero. So really it's the square root of x minus zero um, dx. And then you just solve the integral. Uh, I chose this as my first example because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just the square root of x squared, which is the integral of x. So we got zero to nine um, uh, x dx. And that integral is just pi. The integration of x is one half. Uh, x squared evaluated from 0 to 9. Okay. Now if I plug 0 into that, it cancels it out. But if I plug 9 into that, I got um, pi times 1 half 9 squared. And for the, uh, the sake of this problem, I'm just going to leave it unsimplified. And if you want to simplify it down further, you can. I think it's 81 pi over 2 if you do, um, which isn't terrible. Okay. So really the new lesson is just the setup, which is similar to the cross sections, but then after that it's just learning how to integrate it or just going down the steps there. Okay. All right, so just to summarize, um, my goal is to get to uh, doing a, a vertical line of revolution. What we just did was a horizontal line of revolution. So I encourage you to pause the video and, and write this information down. But when you're talking about doing disk method, meaning there's no gaps or holes in your volume, tomorrow the washer method will have uh, gaps in it, but the disk method does not. Um, your, your, your line of revolution, if it's horizontal, which is like the example we just did, uh, the line of revolution is a y equals uh, some type of number. Like, for instance, we just did one with the x-axis. Okay? Uh, then it will be in terms of dx. Okay, it's going to be a top minus bottom for the radius. Okay, top minus bottom for the radius. And uh, we just set up the equation and solve. Now, hopefully, we'll get to an example of a vertical line of revolution. Um, that will be like an x equals number. So, or, or we can do it about the y-axis, x equals zero. Um, that will be dy. That would be like having a right minus left for your, um, for your radius. All right, let's do another example. It says, find the volume of the surface created by the curves, uh, the cube root of x and x equals 8 that is rotated about the x-axis. Okay, this example is very similar to the one we just did, but I think it's, it's worth, you know, just giving us one more example like this. Uh, if I were to graph the cube root of uh, x, okay, and uh, let me clarify too. Um, let's let's bound this by um, the x-axis as well. So the cube root of x would be from like we'll go to zero, one, one, uh, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to which would be right here. So there's the cube root of eight. Here's x equals eight, and here is that shaded bounded region okay now if i rotate this bounded region about the x-axis you see that it is a full area that is going all the way around and making this kind of three-dimensional shape okay i'm not going to graph this again on that website because it's the same exact process as before it makes the same exact shape but because it's cube root of x it's a little bit skinnier all right now because the line of revolution is about the x-axis, that is horizontal. I think it's sometimes nice to clarify. This is a horizontal line of revolution, meaning this is all in terms of x dx. Okay? It's perpendicular. So, so my radius will be perpendicular to the x-axis. All right. Remember, volume is equal to pi integration a to b of r squared dx. Okay? Now, I got the pi. The left and right, as far left and as far right as we go, is we're going from 0 to 8. 
And the radius is just that top from the top of my equation to my line of revolution, the difference between the two. So this is the cube root of x, or x to the one third, minus zero quantity squared. And that's it. Really, all you have to do is just figure out what that radius is by taking the difference of the equation to the line of revolution. Um, and this isn't the most terrible thing in the world to uh, solve. If you simplify, it's just x to the two-thirds power. And I'll quickly show you what that answer is so we can move on. Uh, it's pi. The integration, I believe, is three-fifths x to the five-thirds power evaluated from zero to eight. Um, and if you plug zero in, it cancels it out. But if you plug eight in, we'll just leave it unsimplified for sake of time. Okay. All right, so that is um, that is rotated. Another example about the x-axis. Let's let's uh, let's kind of keep going. I want to do some more good equations. Um, all right, I'm gonna set this one up. I think this is a. Um, well, actually, I think what I'm gonna do. I think it's in our best interest to save this one for our uh, review example the first day we get back. So I'm going to move on to uh, this example here. Okay. All right. That's problem set up a little bit different than before. It says, find the volume of the surface created by the curves y equals the square root of x. Okay. Um, x equals 0 and y equals 3. So when you take that bounded region, and we're going to rotate it about the y-axis. So the y-axis is a vertical line. Okay, so let me, let me draw this out so we can really see the difference between this and the last example. Okay, so draw my axes here. The square root of x we know looks like this. So over 1 up 1, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up uh, 3. So there's the, there's the square root of x. Now I got that. I got the, um, the x equals 0, which is the y-axis right here. Okay, so I got that region. I got this region. And I got y equals 3, which is this line here. So the bounded region of all three of those equations is this area right here. Okay, it's that area there. Now what we're doing is, is we're taking this area and we're rotating it about the y-axis, which is this little piece right here. So imagine this is on some type of uh, you know, a, a pencil or an axis or something, and I'm rotating this shape around this axis. So it's going to mirror itself on this side, and it's going to make this three-dimensional tornado-looking shape. Now I do want us to look at this on that website so we can see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I have that, uh, that equation. It looks similar to the previous one that we did, but what I did is I changed it up a little bit. I, I, put, I inputted that uh, this, this shaded region that we sketched on our graph is right here is what we're rotating about the y-axis. So watch what happens when I rotate that. Mm -hmm. See how I'm rotating it from, I'm taking this right minus left and I'm rotating it right to left, right to left. And it's making this tornado disc looking volume shape. And I want to know what the volume of all of that is. Huh? Isn't that pretty cool? Let's try to do it again. So set the function, revolve. You see how it's revolving around. Okay. So how we figure that out is um, because it's rotating around right to left, around this, this vertical line, this makes it now a dy equation. Okay, a dy equation. So my, uh, my volume equation is going to be pi, all right, the integral from a to b, where a to b is now the bottom most point to the top most point, so in this case 0 to 3, of my, um, of my radius squared in terms of y. Okay, so in this case it's going to be pi integral 0 to 3, because the lowest we go is 0, the highest we go is 3. 
and I'm going to take that zero to three and rotate it about that, that vertical line, right? Um, now, the radius is going to be the equation minus the line of revolution, but because it's in terms of y, my equations need to be in terms of y. So instead of y equals x squared, we're going to have y squared equals x and, um, and uh, x equals 0, right? The rightmost equation is y squared. We're going to subtract the line of revolution, which is equal to 0, and square it. So this is my radius, the right equation minus my line of revolution. Now that's going to tell me all those radiuses that I'm going to rotate around this line of revolution. Okay. All right. Um, and then that's not a terrible, again, not a terrible um, integral to evaluate. This is what y to the fourth dy, which becomes pi. Integration of y to the fourth is one-fifth y to the fifth from zero to three. Again, the good thing about having the line of revolution uh, being zero is it crosses out one of the quantities. If you want to write it out fully, you can. One-fifth, three to the fifth minus one-fifth, zero to the fifth. But again, the zero goes bye-bye. So uh, you can just leave your answer like this for sake of time. All right, I'm at 26 minutes, but there's two more that I'd really like to do. Okay, two more to make to make me feel pretty good about everything we need to know with disk method. Disk method. It says find the region bounded above y equals negative two sine of x on the interval zero to pi um, over two, and below y equals negative two that is rotated about the line y equals negative two. So I encourage you to pause the video. Um, and graph this region. Start by graphing y equals negative 2 sine. Let's start by uh, doing that together. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is, uh, is um, oh, oh, poop, this is the one I was wanting to skip. This, okay, we're going to do this one together. I'm sorry. These are the last two that I'm wanting to do together. I'm going to do this one and this one. Okay, sorry. Let's start with this one. Sorry. Um, example four. We'll come back. So I'm going to say this example here, example two, and I'm going to save this example here, example six, for us in class together. The rest I would like to do together, so these last two. Okay, example four says, find the volume of the surface created by the curves y equals the square root of x, x equals zero, and y equals three that is rotated about the line y equals three. So let's start by doing this. Let's start by graphing exactly what we're given. So here's my axes. And we're going to start by doing, uh, let's start by graphing the shaded region that we're revolving. I encourage you to pause the video and maybe try to do it on your own, but I'm going to start by graphing the square root of x. Which is, looks like this. Okay, so there's the square root of x. Um, x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and y equals 3, so 1, 2, 3. Now, if you notice, this is the same exact shaded region as the last problem that we did. But instead of rotating this about the, um, uh, the, the line x equals 0, notice what we're doing now. It's about the line y equals 3. My line of revolution is this line right here. Notice how my, my, my shaded region rests up nicely against this area. And I'm rotating it about this line. So imagine what happens if I rotate it about this line. It's going to be going top to bottom here. It's going top to bottom. So this should be making a, uh, a three-dimensional figure up and down, up and down. So because we're rotating my line of revolution uh, around a horizontal line, that makes this dx. And this makes this top minus bottom for my radius. Okay? All right, so this is how it works. My volume equals pi, the integration from A to B. So since it's top minus bottom, we're going to be doing my leftmost value to my rightmost value. So in this case, 0 all the way over to 9. Okay. And now my radius is, I always tell students that the best way to make sure you get your radius right, because we're squaring it, it doesn't matter really which one you put first because squaring negates any negative signs. 
But I always say do your line of revolution, or I'm sorry, your equation minus your line of revolution. You'll be consistent every single time. So my equation in this case is the square root of x, and I'm going to subtract my line of revolution. So there's my radius, the difference from my line of revolution to my equation. I think it's it will always make you get it right if you put your equation first minus your line of revolution. Okay, so this ends up uh, now. This this problem is a little bit more involved than, than the other ones because my line of revolution is no longer equal to zero. So I have to I have to spend a little bit more time uh, solving this out. Okay, um, and if I were to foil this, I get um, uh, let's see, I get x minus six square root of x plus 9 dx, and then we can, uh, we can integrate this to, um, let's see here, to 1 half, sorry, 1 half x squared uh, minus, I believe this integrates to 4x to the 3 halves, and this integrates to 9x from 0 to 9, okay? Now, uh, from this point forward, you should be able to just plug 9 in, plug 0 in, and you have your answer. So we're going to leave it like this for now. Really, it's all about the setup. Okay. All right, so we've done an example of, uh, you know, top minus bottom, left minus right, line of revolution is horizontal and vertical. Like you're seeing all the different examples. I want to do one more, and then I'll feel okay about it. Uh, it says, find the volume of the surface created by... And this example is, again, notice how it's the same example we've been doing, but I'm just showing you all the different ways that we can rotate, right? In this particular example, I'm going to draw the axes like this. Pause the video, and in fact, I'm going to pause the video right now for sake of time, and I'm going to sketch it out for you. So here, once we draw out the shaded region, notice this is the same exact example that I gave you for the very first example. Yeah, but remember, in the first example, we were rotating at about this horizontal um, x-axis, but now I want us to rotate at about the vertical line, x equals 9, which is this line right here that this shaded region is resting up against. Okay, So if I'm, if I'm rotating at about this vertical line, it's going from left to right here. See how it rotates this way? Okay, So it's going to kind of map itself over here and make this three-dimensional swirly figure. Okay, so it's not, so even though it's the same shaded region, we're rotating about something differently, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little bit different, okay? Now, it's vertical, which means that this is like a, a right minus left type of equation for your radius, meaning that it's going to be a dy equation. <laughs> Bless me. So everything needs to be in terms of y. So, for example, we have y squared equals um, x, and we have x equals 9. Okay, so everything's in terms of x equals. Okay, so my volume is going to be equal to pi, the integration from, now because we're rotating left to right, we're going to put our lowermost value to our uppermost value. So the lowest value I go is 0, the uppermost value I go is 3, and then it's going to be a right minus left equation. So I always say do your line of revolution, or I'm sorry, <laughs> your equation minus your line of revolution. So my equation is y squared, and my line of revolution is 9, quantity squared. This radius is going to create this shape, all right, and you're going to have your volume. So for sake of time, uh, well, just go a little bit further. 0 to 3. If I square this quantity, I believe it's y to the fourth minus uh, 18y squared plus 81. And the integration of that is not terrible. I'll do that really quick. Um, a little brackets here. Uh, I believe that's one fifth y to the fifth uh, minus six y cubed plus eighty one y evaluated from zero to three. Zero again is going to cancel everything out, uh, so that's good for to have that as one of our bounds. And um, I'll just go ahead and tell you, when I plugged in uh, the 3, it simplifies to 81 plus 243 over 5. That's as far as I simplified it. Okay. 
All right, so just a quick recap here. I know I only got a few seconds. I'm over already. But we did disk method by talking about pretty much the same thing as uh, cross-sectional volume, okay, but now it's just R squared. And we did examples where we had the line of evolution being horizontal and vertical. Okay, so here was a horizontal example. Here was a uh, vertical example, horizontal example, and a, uh, I'm sorry, this was a, yeah, horizontal example and a vertical example. So we pretty much did one where the line of revolution was zero and then when it was some other number. Okay, we're going to do example two and six together later. But for now, I encourage you to try these problems if you can um, and try your delta math. So far, you should be able to do pretty much all but two of the problems on delta math. All right. Good job, guys. We got this. Um, I will talk to you all soon.